The first surgeon we're going to talk to today is Dr. Samadhi, and we've learned a little bit about him. He's the vice chair of our Department of Urology and is one of the world leaders in robotic prostate surgery. He's innovated with this device. He's performed more than 3,000 procedures with this device, making him the busiest man, and one can only wonder how he ever makes it home, but he does. And he has really changed the face of how we see prostate cancer, this enormously common and significant disease. What Dr. Samadhi has done, and in this cartoon will illustrate, is using his hands to operate these small, individual, straw-sized sticks. They can be inserted and threaded down through small keyholes created in the abdominal wall, down into the center, deep, deepest, darkest part of the pelvis. This is a very difficult region to reach with any other instrumentation. You can't get your hand comfortably down there to work. And Dr. Samadhi inserts these instruments, and down there localizes the cancerous prostate gland. And using these instruments can tease the prostate gland away from many essential delicate structures. Those yellow lines you see there are nerves that typically surround the prostate, responsible for sexual function, amongst other things. And if they're damaged during surgery, these functions are lost. Without disturbing these structures, these nerves, the prostate gland can be dissected with the robot, removed, and the cancer cured. Once it's removed, the, the ureters or the urethra, which is responsible for dra dra draining urine from the body, can be reattached. And using these very tiny microscopic instruments that have the ability to have very small motions, which are controlled by the robotic mechanisms, the urethra can be reattached in a perfect magnified viewed fashion. Dr. Samadhi, can you tell us a little bit more about prostate? We've <laughs> heard so much in the press about the prostate gland, about prostate cancer, about treatment modalities. Tell us who should get prostate surgery and why, when you look at prostate surgery, they should be considering very strongly robotic surgery as the first line of treatment. Michael, thank you very much uh, for uh, the opportunity. Before I start, I want to thank all of my colleagues on the stage. It's, it's a pleasure and honor to really share the stage with everyone. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Charney, Mike Marin, and all the colleagues in the room. It, it, it's really, you know, when you talk about surgery, of course, there's a lot of interaction with all physicians at Mount Sinai. But surgeons, you know, we all act like a family from different departments and walking through the hospital and share day to day with everyone in the room and many others that are not here, it's a great honor. So thank you for this opportunity. When we talk about prostate cancer, we're going to see an increase in the number of prostate cancer in the next few years and decades. And mostly because the quality of life is getting better and better. Thanks to a lot of cardiologists and medical doctors, as a result of aspirin, Plavix, cardiac stents, we're going to live longer and longer. And we see now patients coming into our office in their 70s and 80s that are doing quite well. With time, we're going to see more prostate cancer. Today in 2012, over 230,000 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer and close to 30,000 continue to die. When we talk about prostate cancer, there are different types. In the media, you read about the fact that this cancer is a slow-growing disease, and watchful waiting or close surveillance is, is the way to go. But you really have to understand different types. There are some aggressive ones, there are some slow-growing ones, and I think the art of medicine is not to perform robotic surgery on everyone, but to individualize the care and to take every patient when they come. And one, sit, one size fits all is not going to be the best medicine. To, to answer the question that Mike, uh, Dr. Marin asked, is PSA is a simple test that we get for screening. It's not a very sensitive test, and you never treat any patient based on one number or one test. I always use the trend of the PSA and the velocity and the way the PSA increases over time as a way whether I should do a biopsy on someone or not. I look into examining the patient, Look at the family history. If someone has genetic in their family, race, which we know that in African Americans we see more prostate cancer than others. And really, it's a detective work to put this together. When it comes to treatment options, we've gone through the evolution of open surgery, laparoscopic, and now you saw robotic surgery. 
The way I would think of robotic surgery is an, is an extension of my arms. As Dr. Marin explained, we're working in a very narrow space with a prostate that's surrounded by sensitive nerves attached to many organs. So the robot allows me to be able to move in a finite area, being able to work in a bloodless field. If there's no blood in the field, I can really see what we're doing. With the magnification of the camera, you can save the nerves. Removal of the prostate tells you how much cancer you have, so it's a very accurate way to know what your stage is, how much cancer you have, what type of cancer, what are the margins, what are the lymph nodes, and that's why removal of the prostate is superior than radiation and other treatment options that we used to have. Again, if you're older and you have many cardiac issues, perhaps we may want to watch you or do radiation, but I always preserve radiation for after surgery because that's a lot easier. We used to do a lot of CD implants or other radiations, but once you do radiation, it's very difficult to do surgery after radiation. So that's one of the reasons why more and more we're removing the prostate. And the big concern that a lot of people had with incontinence and sexual dysfunction, now you can see that it's much improved. We're really doing finite work near these nerves. We're not taking the nerves from the prostate. Now we're taking the prostate away from the nerves. This patient stayed 24 hours only at Mount Sinai. It's a beautiful hospital facing Central Park. We're changing the whole image of what prostate cancer was. Within 24 hours, they're able to go home. The catheter comes out a week after and they can get back to work early. What I like about surgery is that you pay the price now. There is recovery after surgery, but as time goes on, you're going to get better and better with minimum side effects, and you still have all options ahead of you. So we've been fortunate enough to be able to do this in the last five years alone. We've done well over 2,000 patients, and, and again, there has been a lot of help with many staff. Some of my staff are here, and I always appreciate the surgical team and, the, the, and mostly your, your help. All of you in this room has made it happen. All of you are the ones that have been behind some of the fundings that goes behind this, and hopefully tonight we walk away with another brand new robot. <laughs> Public service announcement.